Well, hi everyone. I recently did a video where I evaluated the potential impacts of an underwater drone attack that was conducted on the Kerch Bridge by Ukraine. This was back on June 3rd, 2025. I'm recording this video on September 4th, 2025. The purpose of that video is to show that although there's likely damage to the bridge foundation supporting the pier on one side of the main span for the highway portion of the bridge, uh, even though there was damage there, it's likely that it wasn't significant. And that's because these foundations were vastly overdesigned, which they tend to be. But I believe Russia has known all along that this bridge was likely to be a valid military target by Ukraine. As most of you know, I cover a lot of infrastructure topics on this channel, and particularly those that are related to bridge design and construction. And I got a lot of comments on that previous Kerch video where people were saying, okay, it's fine, you think that the bridge didn't sustain any significant damage, but what would it take to destroy this bridge? You know, as an engineer involved with design and construction support for bridge projects, I've been an engineer for over 40 years, focused on bridge projects for the last 25 plus, I just wasn't comfortable giving a how-to for taking a bridge out even when a bridge could be considered a legitimate military target. So instead, I think it's instructive to look at history as a guide. Now, before we get into this video, please check out a recent video that I did on the geotechnical engineering that was done to support the D-Day invasion on June 6th, 1944. I've got a link to that video in the description. So today I'm gonna to compare the Kerch Bridge to the Tanhua Bridge that was repeatedly targeted by US military forces starting in 1965 and eventually ending in its destruction in 1972. I think there's many parallels between these two bridges. For the Tanhua Bridge, it was a key bridge used for transporting supplies to the North Vietnamese Army. The U.S. conducted a total of 873 air sorties with over 140 American pilots shot down in the area of the bridge in the seven year period that this bridge was targeted. Some people considered that American military planners were basically obsessed with taking out this bridge. In fact, one of America's greatest military heroes and Medal of Honor recipients, Admiral James Stockdale, was shot down and captured by North Vietnamese villagers after returning from one of his many bombing runs to this bridge. And he spent the next seven and a half years as a prisoner of war in the infamous Hanoi Hilton prison where he was subjected to repeated torture. And also in 1992, he was Ross Perot's choice for vice president uh, as an independent. And uh, unfortunately, you know, media being what they are, uh, used a soundbite of his introduction uh, to the vice presidential debate that he participated in. And they used it to mock him. And, you know, I didn't know much about Admiral Stockdale at the time, but the more I researched and the more I found out, I was like, this, this man was phenomenal. Uh, just unbelievable patriot, incredibly brave, endured so much uh, during his captivity and uh, a very wise individual. Uh, in fact, he was well-versed in Stoic philosophy and that's what got him through a lot of his difficulties during his captivity. And in fact, he was known to keep a copy of the uh, the handbook, as it's called, by Epictetus. Actually, it's by Epictetus' student because Epictetus didn't write anything down. So I, this this man was incredible. So what we see from the U.S. experience in trying to take out an important bridge as a military target, there was a continual evolution in bombing technology and strategies that had to occur before this bridge was ultimately destroyed. Now, while doing research for this video, I got a lot of great information from this website, Warfare History, and I've included a link to this website in the description. Now, the initial attacks on the Tanhua Bridge were conducted using F-105 Thunder Chiefs equipped with AGM-12 bullpup air-to-ground missiles. This type of attack was problematic as it required radio guidance by the pilot who had to continue flying over the target area while he used a joystick to control the guidance of the missile. Later, the U.S. attempted to use 5,000-pound mines dropped from C-130 aircraft. The idea was for the bombs to be dropped into the Songma River upstream of the bridge 
and then have the mines float down and impact the bridge pier and destroy the bridge. But those attempts uh, were unsuccessful. Later, there were further developments in guided missile technology, and they went to the use of these AGM-62 walleye glide bombs. But again, the damage was repaired in short order whenever a strike was made. Finally, it took a series of missions in 1972 using the newly developed Paveway missiles, which were laser-guided bombs dropped from F-4 Phantoms before the bridge was finally destroyed in October 1972. Now, this is an excerpt from one of Admiral Stockdale's books about these missions to destroy the Tanwa Bridge. A week later, we made a series of daily strikes against the bridge. This was a big, tough, old rail highway span that crossed the wide Songma River just north of the coastal town of Tanwa. We had bombed this old structure before, and it seemed to be our nemesis. We hit both the bridge decks and superstructure with bullpup-guided bombs, 500-pound bombs, and even a few 1,000-pound bombs, but to no permanent avail. From the air, one could look down and see its structural members broken and bent, but the bridge continued to stand there week after week. Deck planking replaced during the nights and truckloads of imported munitions from the seaport of Haiphong streaming across it headlong west and south for delivery to the Viet Cong. Next time, I would instruct the Marine Crusaders to carry our 2,000-pound bomb load. So here's an aerial shot of this Tanwa bridge site. To describe this bridge, it had two steel truss spans with a center pier that was 16 foot in diameter of reinforced concrete with concrete abutments. And then the bridge had additional reinforcement to protect against bombing attacks. There was a one meter gauge railway track that ran down the middle of a 12 foot wide center bridge. And it had 22 foot wide concrete highway lanes on either side. And as we know, this structure would prove to be one of the most challenging targets for American air power during the war. So a total of 873 sorties were flown against this target. This is the location of Tan Hoa, North Vietnam, or what was formerly North Vietnam. Let's just play some footage from one of these attacks in the late 60s. Tremendous amount of ordnance was dropped against this bridge, but it wasn't, wouldn't be till many years later that the bridge was actually taken out. So the first bombs dropped against this bridge were in 1965. We see pictures of the bridge when it was finally destroyed. So now let's come to the present and talk about the Kerch Bridge. The Kerch Bridge connects Russia with Crimea, or as the Ukrainians say, the temporarily and illegally occupied Crimea that has huge strategic importance and has been the target of repeated attacks by Ukraine. In fact, uh, there's been reported uh, four major attacks going back to October 2022, where a truck bomb was detonated on the highway bridge deck, which did extensive damage and resulted in a fire of the train on the adjacent rail tracks. There were also subsequent missile attacks. Uh, one series of attacks that reportedly in included the U.S. supplied Attackum missiles. So these Attackums are 500 pound blast fragmentation warheads with a maximum range of 300 kilometers or around 180 miles. There's also been previous sea drone attacks, the most recent of which targeted the exposed pile foundations below the bottom of the pile cap supporting the bridge pier on one end of the span. And let's take a look at some of the details associated with that attack. And according to the BBC, they verified that it was the eastern edge of the road bridge, the, the pier on the east side of the road bridge where this detonation occurred. So we're talking about this location here. There's two arches. The one arch in the foreground here supports a dual track railway and the roadway bridge has four lanes of traffic. Now let's just get an overall view of this location. So the Kerch Strait where this bridge lies connects the Black Sea to the south with the Sea of Azov to the north. Keep in mind that this attack was most likely designed for purposes of harassment. I don't think Ukraine had the expectation of creating significant damage to this bridge from this attack. Okay, so next let's look at some of the details associated with the bridge foundation, which shows that it was designed and built with a lot of redundancy in its load carrying capacity. Now here's a photo of the bridge pier supporting one side of the arches under construction. This construction occurred between 2016 and 2019. And we know that there were a number of different pile types used in the construction of this bridge. So I wanted to verify what pile type 
was used at the location of the bridge pier that was attacked here on June 3rd. And you can see these steel pipes, these are pipe pile. So these are driven pile and they're typically filled with concrete, which was the case here. You can see the arch under construction. This arch has a length of 227 meters. So about 745 feet. Now we see the two columns on a given pier on one side of the arches. And as I mentioned in the previous video, these pipe pile are driven vertically as well as on a batter. So angled from the vertical to provide increased lateral support. Now searching the internet for more details of this bridge foundation, for both piers supporting each side of these arches, there were a total of 190 piles used. On each pier, there were a total of 95 pile with a diameter of 1.42 meters, which is over 4.6 feet in diameter. And the wall thickness of these piles is reported to be up to 40 millimeters, so about an inch and a half. So I think these past attacks have largely been designed to harass the Russians, but also to dial in operationally what it will take to ultimately remove this bridge from service. And this bridge is so long, it provides ample target opportunities. The bridge is over 18 kilometers long in total, or over 11 miles. In the last two weeks, there's been several new developments in Ukraine's capabilities and tactics, which I think could ultimately result in the destruction of this bridge sooner rather than later. The first is the development of Ukraine's Flamingo cruise missile. This missile is manufactured by Ukraine, so it's not subject to targeting limitations that have come with allied supplied missiles such as the Atakums. There was a recent Associated Press story about this missile that detailed a range of 3,000 kilometers, which is over 1,900 miles. It has a warhead with a payload of 1,150 kilograms of explosives or 2,540 pounds. The other recent development is that Ukraine has been systematically degrading Russia's air defense capability throughout the Crimea, deploying low-flying drones and missiles. Let's look at some of that footage. Degradation of these air defense capabilities can leave gaps and create uh, windows of opportunity for future attacks by Ukraine against the Kerch Bridge. So just one installation after the other being taken out. So these tactics could lead to the deployment of missile swarms to the Kerch Bridge, which would likely take the bridge out of service for long periods of time. So I'll continue to follow the story. I hope the lessons of history illustrate how this situation is likely to play out for Ukraine over time. With that, I want to send out a shout out to those of you who've contributed to buy me a coffee. There's a link in the description if you're so inclined. I also want to thank the channel members and those of you who've contributed to Super Thanks, additional great ways to support the channel. So please stay tuned for future videos, everyone.